The BBC Proms is the largest music festival in the world, but it's not just the scale and scope of the festival over two months with at least one event a day that, that makes it so special. It's that the very values of the proms now are exactly the same as they were in 1895, which is bringing the best quality classical music to the largest possible audience. <laughs> It's really hard for me to talk about the things that um, might inspire you know, particular sectors of the audience or individuals, and that's because there's something in the problems for everybody. The sort of things that I'm sure will attract you know, lots of attention are you know, the big international orchestras, the return of the Simon Bolivar Orchestra with Gustavo Dudamel, who made such a, a sensational proms debut in 2007. Um, those other international orchestras, the Israel Philharmonic, the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, the Philadelphia Orchestra, Ivan Fischer at the Budapest Festival Orchestra. There's a whole roll call of international orchestras. <laughs> Yes, there is a roll call of international artists, so the superstar classical soloists, and um, whether it be the pianist Marta Argerich, whether it be violinists such as Nigel Kennedy coming back to play solo Bach in the late night for the first time, or Anna Sophie Mutter. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> Maybe some of the other things that the audience will pick up on are some of the more unusual and, and new things within the proms. So we have the first ever comedy prom hosted by that musical genius, Tim Minchin. Um, we have a horrible histories prom, which is our first ever free children's prom. And we have a human planet prom. Um, and those two, the human planet prom and horrible histories, are very good ways of showing, as we did with the Doctor Who prom, what the BBC can uniquely do in putting together BBC properties and actually get a really interesting classical music story told and classical music performed and bring that to new audiences who might come in because it's in a more friendly and accessible environment. This is perhaps the most significant anniversary that we're celebrating this year. And maybe his music is not well enough known. There are some pieces, of course, which are, which are very popular. But there are other pieces, the big Faust Symphony and the Dante Symphony, are very, very striking pieces of romantic orchestral and choral music. And th th those, are, I think, are going to be central planks of our celebration of Liszt. But you can't get away from Liszt and the piano and that opportunity that he, that he gives for the great virtuosos of our day to, to show off their, their technical prowess as well as the, the poetry of their playing. The youngest ever soloist um, to appear on the opening night, Benjamin Grosvenor, will be playing Liszt's second piano concerto. And then we welcome one of the perhaps the best known classical musician of our day, um, the extraordinary Chinese pianist Lang Lang. Since the start of the proms, new music and unfamiliar contemporary work have, have played a really central part in, in the proms, uh, and that's absolutely true today. So with the BBC being the most significant commissioner of new music in the world, you know, we have in this season, for example, 10 BBC commissions. Uh, we have 20 other world or UK premiers. And so it's absolutely part of the sort of thread that runs through the proms. I think there'll always be highlights for, for certain members of the audience and, and they will be special moments that they will have and, and that's because of that feeling that, that there is something for everybody at the proms and things like the John Wilson Orchestra for example is, is going to be something that is another eagerly awaited prom appearance, their last two proms um, devoted to MGM and also devoted to Rogers and Hammerstein have been sensational not only in terms of just the quality of the play but the, sort of the fun of the event itself. You always need festivals to start with a, with a bang. 
and uh, I think our opening weekend does just that. So we've got the big call and orchestral concert on the opening night with the Anacheks Glagolitic Mass, as well as the beginnings of our list celebration. <laughs> Then we've got the Rossini William Tell, complete opera um, with the forces of Academy of Santa Cecilia and Antonio Papano on the Saturday night. Then the largest scale piece ever written, this largest scale symphony by Havergal Bryan, the Gothic Symphony. And then on Monday, the celebrations just carry on because Marta Argovich arrives. That's just the first four days, but it's a big, big statement about the range and ambition of the proms. I'm sure that somebody will find within that two months something that they're just going to not only enjoy but take their breath away. If you just want to pay five pounds, you can come, you can queue on the day, and you can stand and hear some of the greatest music you'll ever hear by some of the greatest performers. Those are the things that make the prom special.